Hi everyone. Today we are continuing with word problems with the Pythagorean theorem or problem solving with the Pythagorean theorem. Not so much word problems today. Um, today's problems are three-dimensional figures, but we're still going to be using the Pythagorean theorem to find missing heights or slant heights or other measures that they're asking us for in three-dimensional figures. So this is the worksheet that we're going to be looking at. I'm going to put the whole thing up here so you can see it for a minute, and then I will zoom it in so I can see it with these old eyes and help you out a little bit more. This is the title of our worksheet. It's called 3D Problems, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So grab a hold of this worksheet if you have a copy, and if you don't, you can still follow along, of course, and learn how to do these problems with us. All right, so here is the problem. We are going to find the height of the square pyramid and round the answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. All right, so we've got ourselves a pyramid over here. A square pyramid just means that the base of the pyramid is the shape of a square. So this gray base, okay, is 18 meters on each side, right, because it's a square. So we just want to keep that in mind. Now, you kind of have to visualize the right triangle that would be standing up inside of this pyramid, okay? Because they're asking us to find out how tall this pyramid is. This 25 on the side is not how tall it is because that measure is kind of on a slant. And when you measure the height of something, you never measure it on a on a slant, right? You don't lean to the side when you're figuring out how tall you are, right? When you are measuring your height, you stand up perfectly straight, as tall as you can, and your body is perpendicular to the floor. The height has to be straight up and down. So for this triangle, this is what our height has to look like, right? Straight up and down like that, okay? So I'm going to draw the height right through the middle of this triangle. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, whoops, drag this little line over here. To kind of go in like that okay so what I did here is I kind of drew a right triangle inside this pyramid and I hope you can see that right this side looks a little a little wonky here let me just try to straighten that out more kind of like that okay so this right triangle is standing up inside this pyramid and that's what we have to look at or that's what we have to think about when we're finding the height of this pyramid, if that makes sense. Now, if you look at this standing up triangle that we just drew, there would be a little right angle right there in the corner, okay? So this 25 that's kind of on the slant would be the diagonal of that triangle. This would be one of the legs. And notice it's only going halfway, right? It's not going all the way through the base. It's only going halfway through the base. So we have to think about that in a minute. And this is what we're trying to figure out, is the height, right? How tall, I'm going to put a little X here, how tall is this pyramid? Now for this measure here, for this leg, this leg is only half of the total length of the square pyramid. So if this base has a length of 18 meters, half of it, of course, would be 9 meters. So I'm going to label that as a 9 right there. So I know that this leg is 9 meters. I know that this slanted side, which we call the slant height, is 25 meters, and we are going to find the height, right? There's a difference between the height and the slant height. Okay, I'm going to start out with my equation, always a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I'm going to replace the values that I know. Well, let's see, here's my right angle. Across from my right angle is going to be my hypotenuse, right? And also, since it's slanting, we know that's going to be the hypotenuse, so that's 25. And then 9 is going to be one of my legs. So I can put that 9 in either the A place or the B place. I'm going to put it in place of B. And I'm going to put the 25 in place of C. And then we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. 9 squared is 81. 25 squared is 625. And to solve this problem, we're going to have to subtract 81 from each side before we find the square root, because we need to make sure that that variable is by itself first. So I'm going to break out my calculator, even though I could do this. Of course, I could do this without a calculator, but I'm being a little lazy right now. Let me make that 544 when I subtract over there. And now I'm going to find the square root on each side. So when I do the square root of 544, 
I get a pretty long decimal. We're going to round it to the nearest tenth, right? In the directions, it said to round to the nearest tenth. Oh, and since I'm rounding, I don't know if you guys caught this here, but look, I shouldn't be using a regular equal sign, right? I should be using a squiggle because I am rounding. And I'm going to round this to about 23.3. So we're going to say that the height, right, be sure to answer the question again. We're going to say that the height is 23.3 meters. All right, so let's look at another problem. I'm going to scooch down to the bottom here, and we've got two more problems we're going to do, and one of them is kind of involved, that second one. Look at this craziness, but we'll get there in a second. Okay, it says carefully read and solve each problem, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So I'm going to look at this cone right here, and this time we are going to find the slant height. So here's a little reminder that the slant height is the one that's kind of like on the angle, and the regular height is the one that's perpendicular to the base. All right, again, I'm going to draw a right triangle inside this cone, right? So right from the center of the base up to the top, that's my height, right? That is my straight up and down height right there. And then I'm going to draw a line from the center out to the edge. And I can put a little right angle there. All right, so now let's put some measures on here. This says find the slant height of, the, of a cone that has a radius of 12, right? Well, the radius is halfway through a circle, so that's perfect. It's exactly what I need. That's 12. And it says a height of 21. Well, that means this height is 21. And we're going to figure out what the slant height is. All right, here we go. Let's start out with our formula. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now this time, since I'm trying to find the slant height, what I'm looking for is the hypotenuse, right? Because here's my right angle, and if I look across from the right angle, that means that is the hypotenuse. So my 12 and my 21 are actually the two legs. So I'm going to put a 12 squared and a 21 squared. I'm going to keep that hypotenuse as a variable because that's what we're trying to figure out. 12 squared is 144. And 21 squared is 441, and that equals c squared. And then we're going to add. We're going to add 144 plus 441, and that's going to give us 585 equals c squared. And our last step is going to be to undo that second power, which is finding the square root. Now, this isn't a perfect square, so I can tell already that I'm going to have to use a little squiggle here because I'm going to be rounding, right? We're going to round to the nearest tenth. It told us to do that in the, in the directions. So I'm going to do the square root of 585, and that gives me 24.18. So since it's 0.18, that 8 tells me to bump up that 1, and we're going to call this 24.2. And again, we want to make sure that we're always answering the question, right? So I'm going to say the slant height is, we should probably say about, I don't think I said about earlier, but I should say about because we really are estimating, 24.2, and they were talking about centimeters here, so I want to make sure I use the proper label, 24.2 centimeters. All right, now it's time for this one. So this one is kind of like a two-stepper because they're asking us to find the missing side lengths in this rectangular prism. Now, another thing I want to point out to you is this length here, D, okay, the side length D that we're eventually going to find. We'll do C first, but then we're going to find D. Notice how it goes from the top back corner to the front right corner. They call side D the interior diagonal. That's what they call that. That's an interior diagonal of a three-dimensional figure. And that is the longest possible side length of a 3D figure, right? So if you were putting something in this box, like say you were going to put a golf club in this box, if you angled it, right, you would have the, the longest space if you went from the top back corner to the front right corner, right? That would be the longest distance you would have. Um, so that's something that I just wanted to point out to you because sometimes they're going to ask you for the interior diagonal and that's what they mean. Like the longest interior diagonal goes from front to back, top to bottom. Okay, so here we go. 
we've got a box here. Let's think of this as like a shoe box or something. And it says we're going to find the missing side lengths in this rectangular prism. Now, I know that when you're looking at this picture, this in the front corner here doesn't look like a right angle. But just imagine if that were a box, right? You know that if you have a box like a shoe box, here's the base of it or the bottom of it. We know that there are right angles in all four of these corners, okay? So this right here is actually a right angle. So we're going to mark that off as our right angle. Now, I'm going to start out by figuring out what the length of side C is. I know that this is 15. And this side over here, I don't have a measure on it right now. However, I do have a measure on this side of the box. And if it's a box, it's going to be the same on both sides, right? So if this is 7 on the right side, that tells me that this is also going to be 7 on the left side, right? So here and here. So I'm looking at this right triangle on the bottom of the box. And that's what we're going to do to figure out side length C. OK, here's our right angle. This is a diagonal line on the bottom of the box, so that's the hypotenuse. If I wasn't sure, I would look at my right angle and look straight across from it, right? And that would remind me that C is my hypotenuse. So we're going to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I've got two legs here because the 7 and the 15 are the two sides that make that right angle. So 7 squared plus 15 squared equals C squared. 7 squared is 49. And 15 squared is 225. Whoops, I put an equal sign there by accident. That should be a plus sign. Hopefully you did not copy and do that. That's 49, that's plus, that's 225. OK, and this equals C squared. And now I'm going to add the 49 and the 225 together. And that's going to give me 274 equals C squared. As always, our last step is going to be to find the square root. 274 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to have to do a little rounding here. I'm going to do a squiggle because I'm estimating. So C is approximately 16.6 .6 inches long. All right, so now this is where it gets interesting. This 16.6 .6 is the length of side C right here. So I'm going to write this down, 16.6. .6. Now the interesting thing about it is that this was the hypotenuse on our first triangle, right? We just figured out what the length of C was, and what we figured out was the hypotenuse. So side C was the hypotenuse of our first triangle. But now I'm going to be looking at this interior triangle that I was talking about before. Right now we're looking at this triangle. This is a whole different triangle right here. Okay, we're looking at this one. I'm going to highlight the whole entire thing so we can see it. And you'll notice that the hypotenuse of our first triangle, right, has now become one of the legs of our second triangle. Do you see that? So 16.6 was the hypotenuse of this triangle on the bottom. But now the 16.6 .6 is one of the legs of the next triangle that we're going to be using. Because here's our right angle right here. And we've got a leg and a leg. And D is another hypotenuse. OK. So 16.6 .6 is going to be one of our legs. This is going to be our other leg. I don't see a measure here, but I do see a measure on this side, right? So if this box is 12 inches tall on the right, it's also going to be 12 inches tall on the left. So I've got 12 and 16.6 .6 are my two legs, and D is my hypotenuse. And again, that's called the interior diagonal. All right, so we've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to replace the 12 in place of one variable. I'm going to do the 16.6 .6 in place of another variable. And we will figure out what the hypotenuse is. 12 squared is 144. 16.6, .6, I'm going to use my calculator for that one. And that is 275.56. And that equals C squared. I'm going to add the 144 to that, and that's going to give me 419.56 equals c squared. And the last thing we're going to do is find the square root on both sides. So we're going to use our calculator, of course, because this is not a perfect square. 
and I'm going to round this one again to the nearest tenth. Since I'm rounding, I'm going to use a squiggle. And the square root of 419.56 is 20.48, so that means it's going to round up to 20.5. Alright, so when they are asking us for the two missing measures, I'm going to say that side, I'm going to make sure I answer my question, right? I'm going to say that side C is approximately 16.6, and these were inches we were talking about. And then I'm going to say that side D is approximately 20.5 inches. All right, so I know this last one was, it looks a little bit crazy, a little bit confusing, but it's really not. It's just kind of like a, a two-step Pythagorean theorem problem. But I just think it's really interesting how the first triangle um, is the hypotenuse, and then that hypotenuse turns out to be one of the legs for the second triangle. So I, th I always think that's kind of interesting the way that works. Um, but if you ever have a word problem where they're asking you, will something fit inside of a box, you know, with certain dimensions, like maybe they would say to you, you know, would, um, I don't know, would, I don't even know what you would have, but would an object, we'll say, that is 20 inches long fit inside this box right here, right? This box that we just did. And they might just give you the dimensions of the box and ask you if something 20 inches long would fit inside here. And you would have to do this two-step process because you would need to figure out what the measure of the interior diagonal is. And after all that, you would answer the question and say, yes, an object 20 inches long would fit inside this box because the interior diagonal is 20.5, which is bigger, right? So that means that a 20-inch object would fit inside there. All right. I know this was a little crazy, but I think it was okay. Hopefully you guys did well on it. Please ask me if you have any questions in class tomorrow or ask whoever your wonderful math teacher is. We're always happy to help, and I'll see you next time.